everybody. Welcome to Lead Round the Table. This is the perfect way to spend a Saturday night, especially with this cold snap that we've been having. So I don't know about you elsewhere in the UK, but here in Aberdeen, we've had just the most crazy amount of snow. And today it's like really, really windy as well. So this is the perfect Saturday night in for me. I don't know about the rest of you. So what I thought we would do to start with is we'll just go around, introduce everybody. If you say who you are, which chorus you're from, um, how long you have been in the barbershop world and a little bit about you. And then we will get into the discussion about the leads. So I'm going to go to Kate Porter first because you're on the top left of my screen. <laughs> Hello, um, yes, I'm Kate. Um, I'm one of the section leaders for Fourth Valley Chorus. Um, I also sing lead in Word of Mouth Quartet um, and I sing sort of lead in a trio as well called Black Velvet. Um, and I've been in Fourth Valley since the end of 2012. Um, and yeah, I love singing lead and I'm excited for our chat. We'll go to, um, is it Silke next? Yeah, Silke, yeah, right. Well, uh, actually I'm not from the UK, but I'm from Germany. Um, I sing with No Borders Show Chorus. I'm the lead section leader of No Borders Show Chorus. And um, yeah, I'm a founding member of No Borders Show Chorus. So we were founded in uh, 2015. But actually, I'm in barbershop much longer already since 1987. So I'm kind of a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, and I also sing lead with a quartet, which is called Happy Hour, which is a German quartet. And we are part of Bing, which is the German barbershop association. Um, Bing is the abbreviation of barbershop in Germany. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. And cool. yeah, what can I say? Uh, so I have been a baritone for most of my barbershop life. And I started singing lead when I, like a year before we, we founded um, No Borders Show Chorus. So I have quite a, like a good comparison between those two. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to Siobhan next at Mayflower. Hi. Um, you think you've been singing for a long time. I started in 1982. Okay. You've I've been okay. singing with the Mayflowers for 38 years. Um, I have done bass, but I moved back to lead and I've been a lead for most of that time. I'm lead section leader and I've been a lead section leader for a long time as well. Um, I've done quartet, but that was about 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> Um, and I sing with a small, well, it's a mixed group, a cappellas, but obviously we haven't been meeting. Um, that's about it, really. Thank you very much. Let's go to Sarah from Sensational. Hi, yeah, I'm Sarah New. Um, I have been singing since 1993 in uh, Barbershop. Had a bit of a gap in about 16 years and then came back when um, Somerset Hills then became sensational. I was also in a um, quartet back in 1994 to 96, uh, Uptown Girls, won the gold in 96 and then things changed and I um, ended up leaving, which is a shame really, because things didn't work out with the reason why I left. Um, would love to quartet again, but I think <coughs> it's going to stick to the, to the chorus now. I'm also part of Eight to the Bar, which is within the chorus, which is a small group, a uh, small group. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you very much, Sarah. Let's go to Lynn from Aberdeen. Yes, I'm with Lizzie in Aberdeen Chorus. Um, I'm a newbie compared with you guys. Um, this is just two years and two months since I joined. So things have been a little bit odd, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. First year was brilliant, um, as in all that stuff you had to learn. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy my stuff, my time with, with the chorus. Just love it. Thanks, Lynn. Let's go to Sarah Dobson from Surrey. Hi, yeah, I'm Sarah. I'm um, singing with Surrey, as you said. Um, lead section leader and um, been with them for 15 years now. And I'm also singing a quartet called Oops. So, um, yeah, Oops Quartet. <clears throat> I love you guys. Oh, bless you. Thank you very much. I love you guys. <laughs> Especially when we're yellow. Yes. <laughs> 
Oh, thank yes. you so much, Sarah. Um, let's go to Cathy from Milltown, please. Yeah, I'm Cathy Parr um, from Milltown Sound Chorus, which is based in Wigan. Um, I started singing with them in the summer of 2013, so I'm still a relative newbie. Um, and I've been a lead section leader for about the last three or four years. Um, I'm a primary school teacher by day, got two daughters. That's about it, really. Not that interesting. <laughs> That is interesting. <laughs> of course, it's interesting. Um, Vicky White from Lace City. Hi, I'm Vicky. I've been in Lace City for about eight years. Um, I've always been a lead. I've not tried any other parts because I love lead. Um, I recently became um, assistant section leader for the lead uh, just before Christmas, sort of um, autumn last year, and absolutely love it. And um, yeah, I, I'm just. I just love leads. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all love lead. I should probably introduce myself as well. I'm Lizzie. Um, I sing with Aberdeen Chorus and I'm actually fairly new in the barbershop world as well. I joined in 2014. Um, at the moment, I sing lead. I've always sung lead. Um, I'm also the, the choreographer and show chair for Aberdeen Chorus. So that kind of takes me, you know, not so much in like the section leader kind of thing. I've kind of got responsibilities in some other areas but um yeah I really love it I, I don't know what I would be doing without my barbershop life so uh so the first talking point that I've got is what do you love about singing lead and were you always a lead and some people have already answered this so uh what do you guys love about singing lead it's the part that everybody remembers the melody line isn't it you know, it's the, it's the one that you sing to it while you're driving to work or you're doing your housework. Yeah. Um, nobody remembers the bass line, do they? Or the tone line. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe the bass, but not the baritone. So. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes find though that I listen like when we're doing a rehearsal and I listen to the bass line you know if the director's taking them through a bit of a sectional um and you know the baritone line I sometimes I have to admit get a little bit jealous because sometimes they get those truly gorgeous glorious mm -hmm. kind of notes but I definitely agree the melody is the one that your ear naturally kind of falls to especially if it's a like a popular culture song that you know most people know mm -hmm. um which kind of brings about its own challenges as well as a lead, but we'll get to that a bit later on. <laughs> Anybody else? What do you love about singing lead? And were you always a lead? I think, um, for me, I think um, it's always oh, a bit of reverb there. Um, it's easy rehearsing at home um, and practicing at home if you're a lead, um, for your family's sake. I think um, you know, um, they don't have to listen to maybe the Barry line and think, what on earth is, are you doing there? Um, so I think for my family, I think they're pleased I'm a lead. Um, <laughs> but uh, in, in Oops, actually, we've got a few songs where I, me and the Barry, we, we've swapped. So I sing Barry, she sings lead um, in some songs. So uh, I think I'm a closet Barry in fairness. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. find that it's quite a challenge to adjust your ear to, you know, melody line to a harmony line? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. I think as a lead, you're listening to all three parts anyway. Um, you know, you have to, because as much as you've got the lead line, you've still got to blend, you've still got to know what all the other three parts are doing. Um, so Absolutely. swapping to the Barry part, I don't think is too much different um, as regarding, you know, what you're listening to and who you're listening to. Um, it's just obviously not so uh, melodic, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time but I love it I, I mean I, I just love singing barb shots so you know whatever part I was in I think I'd love but yeah leads leads great I love it I mean I've only sung lead properly um for the for the full years I've been in it uh, and I dabble in the odd song with Barry I've dabbled a little bit there was one year for new year our director Sophie she asked everybody to write down just a little barbershop related New Year's resolution and put it into like a little like memory jar and then look at it the following Christmas and mine was to learn one of our rep songs in a different part and so I learned um, San Francisco Bay Blues in bass and to this day oh. I still don't know the lead line for it because <laughs> I actually hadn't learned it before so whenever we're doing a sing out and whenever that song comes up I'm like ah I'm singing bass. I'm sorry. I'm about to chuck the balance off. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, but I, I have to say I quite liked singing another part. But I think in my in my heart, you know, I think I I belong in in lead. I just I just love the part so much. It's definitely 
got that melodic quality to it. It's the, you know, just like Siobhan said, it's the one that, you know, the melody is where people's ear will naturally fall, you know, from an audience perspective and things. So um, yeah, I, I really love it. I, I feel like I can be my more authentic self if I'm singing the melody, if that makes sense. Having said that, when the leads do get the chance to take on a harmony part, if you're doing a song that's a tenor melody, it's actually such a, it's, it's wonderful. I really, we did one with our chorus recently and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I loved singing, a, you know, a different, a different line for a change. Yeah, but, but I, I think like in, in our chorus, there are a lot of lead singers who sang lead their whole life or their whole barbershop life. And they really struggle when, when they have to sing, uh, when they have to sing um, uh, harmony parts. I mean, for me, it's it's quite I'm quite used to that because of my long bar, uh, baritone history. But um, yeah, like going away from from having the melody mm. and not like relying on the melody, but really doing your own harmony thing. That some of them really have trouble with that. Yeah, and I think it's the same for you, Sarah from Surrey. She was saying that because she. Um, swaps a little bit with the baritone in her quartet. I think the more you practice swapping the parts, the easier it would become. But if you've always sung lead and then suddenly you've got to take on a harmony part, your, you know, your ear isn't tuned into. Well, it is because we are like, like you know, somebody said we are listening to all the three parts. But when you're used to taking on the melody line, it's quite a new challenge to then take on the harmony part, isn't it? We're doing yeah. quite a few songs. Yeah. And I agree. We're doing quite a few songs where we're chopping in and out of the of the harmony bits as well. Um, one of our competition songs is going to be a bit like that. So the leads are out of their comfort zone because we do love just singing the melody and you can get very um, complacent if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just sing along as much as you want. Um, but also I have sung uh, one competition song and one non-competitive song in tenor, but I couldn't go all the way up to the some of the high notes, but I've enjoyed sort of dabbling in tenor, but I, I've always been lead otherwise. I think that's the beauty in dabbling, isn't it? You know, I've been to bass a couple of times and even some of the songs that we sing now, I, I sort of, I like, I'm not a closet bass because I've sung lead for a long time, but I do like that lower range. <laughs> as, <laughs> as I've got older, my voice is, uh, it, it's, it doesn't struggle too much with the top word notes, but I do prefer where it sits a little bit lower in my voice range. So yeah, I don't, that's the only one I haven't tried tenor. <laughs> I can't see that, it's so high. <laughs> it's just really high. I find that um, lockdown as well, I'm much more comfortable in my lower range <laughs> since we haven't been singing live. <laughs> so uh, the upper range has kind of gone a little bit. Mm. So. Um, so another thing to add, what I love about singing a lead is that this is the part where I really can connect um, to my emotions and to like to the emotions of the song. Because I only realized that when I already had started to sing lead, like compared to, to the baritone part, I was never able to like express my emotions and feel the emotions of the song, of the lyrics and all that, like in the way that it, it, I was able to do it when I sang lead. So I, I mean, I don't know why that was, but um, now it, I'm, I'm able to dig much deeper into the songs, into the emotions, everything, and to like really open up and all that. And I think this is because of the really the melody and yeah. it's easier to connect with that. Yeah. yeah, I'll second that. I think when you sing lead, it's easier to sing with more character, I think, because you've got that melody, it just makes more sense. And so you can put more character into what you're singing. Um, yeah, I really enjoy it for that. Really enjoy it. I think it's a great um, part to start with if you've got the range um, for people who are quite new to barbershop. Um, and say, so if you've got the range, I think it's great because people know a lot of these songs or they know of the songs or covers of some songs, which might not necessarily be in barbershop style, but they may know the, the song itself. And I think it's um, something that they might be singing in the shower or singing in the car. You know, so they might think, oh, well, that's something I could start with because I know the words. And so being a lead to start with, um, if they can, you know, sing that range yeah. is a good, is a great one to encourage people to come into Barbershop. Mm -hmm. And then when they get the gist of 
what the four part harmony you know is all about they can kind of think oh well, maybe um go to another part if my range will let me mm. but chances are they might stick with leads because they like to be able to sing most of the you know most of the words that they're used to I like lead as well because um I've made lots of friends um in in barbershop world anyway but leads I think we, we we're just such a happy bunch in Lake City the leads and um I think it's because we get to sing all, all the all the most of the words yeah. and I think as well the emotions we can we can do a lot of things with with the words and put pull the emotions across everybody's part really is, is an equal you know all four parts make the equal the whole but I think there's something about lead where you can express a bit more um because you have a lot of the the words and, mm -hmm. and phrases and um they're like whole sentences and whole phrases not you know just parts of words <laughs> So, yeah, I like that. And be honest, um, if we didn't have the melody line and you only had the three parts, well, yeah, <laughs> it, would be, it would be lacking, possibly. Yeah, it's, good, it's, it's, good. it's nice. I love it. Another thing I like about Leeds is um, I don't know about your choruses, but we, um, in Milltown, the, the Leeds is the largest section, even though we are still a small chorus. Um, and so there's a lot of strength in numbers there as well. Mm. Um, I suppose with some rehearsals. Um, there might only be one tenor there because we only have three mm -hmm. and and that would be very difficult to do on your own and so to carry that and I don't think that's something I could do so as a lead you've always got that backup it's, there's always there's always enough of the team there mm -hmm. um, for the backup for you so it's definitely strength in numbers as well I think yeah yeah definitely it's it's for Aberdeen it's our largest section um I'm not sure about other choruses is are the leads the largest section for you guys as well yeah 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 and i think that probably goes back to what vicky was saying it's you know it's definitely good for the recruitment side of things and the retention it's a great introduction to barbershop to to sing the melody and then kind of you know find find those skills with listening to the other parts as well and then possibly dabbling further into into a different harmony line just um okay to, sorry just to add to that yeah um, at, at lay city we've recently done a singing course for the last three weeks and we we ended up with with over a hundred people on Zoom, which is very unusual for us. And the lead section one on the first night was forty five. Oh wow! wow. We had forty five leads. I, I, it was just amazing. We had to scroll through so many pages to see. <laughs> we, we had uh, there's there's probably about sixty of us at the moment that are permanent members, roughly, and we had one hundred and seventeen on on the one one of the first well the first week. Um, and, and say 45 leads. I, I don't know how many were in the other sections, but in the past we have had quite a strong base section as well. Um, in numbers, uh, not in not well in sound as well, but in numbers, it's usually been leads and, and bases that have been the, the biggest sections. Mm. And and like you were saying, uh, Siobhan, about that lovely rich, deep yes. notes. So obviously, I'm envious because I can't reach those. But you know, <laughs> it sounds so nice with leads. <laughs> when you're doing a duet <laughs> so the next discussion point i had here what is your understanding of the lead voice part and what does it mean to you which we've kind of already covered but if anybody wants to add something uh, please feel free well i think it's got to be quite a challenge hasn't it i mean keep everybody on the straight and narrow as a lead you know you've got to be able to hold your pitch you've got to obviously um you've got to have a good tone to your voice, nice vocal colour, so everybody else can sort of blend in with you. I think that's the sort of the sort of grounding of a good good chorus, isn't it? A good set lead section. Definitely, definitely agree, yeah. The next one, and this is Siobhan, you were just about to touch on this. What are the challenges of singing the lead part? Well, you've got to be a lyric ninja. <laughs> well, you've got to definitely you've got to know you've got to know all the lyrics and you've got to remember them all um and yeah we quite often um i'm the lyric police at fourth valley because i'm like i've, I've always loved the words and um yeah uh, if if anyone is singing any nonsense i'm the first one to speak up but um yeah you've got to you've got to really um sell the song 
basically. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can be quite difficult. You do have the confidence to have to take the lead line and kind of perform it when you need to, um, but also know when to just shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that's probably the one of the things that I had to learn when I first started in barbershop because you come in and you think, oh yeah, great, I've got the tune. But you don't always have the tune. So I think you kind of have to learn to be really smart about kind of, you know, mixing with the other parts and not just kind of going for it and then not not knowing when to hold back, I think is is a challenge when you when you start out. I would yeah. agree with that, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was a challenge I faced as well. You're not always singing that, you know, you've not always got the note that is still on the melody, you know, particularly when it comes to the tag and that kind of stuff. You, you, you can be, um, you know, you can be the less dominant in the chord. So you, you have to back off a little bit. And it's, it's yeah, definitely when I first started out, it was like, oh, I've got the melody, go for it. But, you know, um, <laughs> eventually sort of the education kind of sets in and you're like, actually, I, I need to back off a bit here. <laughs> I had stamina, stamina challenges, um, posting, long notes, oh. bag breathing. Um, but all, all comes down to breath breathing technique and stamina and fitness as in like vocal fitness, not like <laughs> physical fitness, although that's part of it, but definitely stamina, especially yeah. when you're standing on the risers and you're doing, um, you know, choreo, whatever else you're doing. The stamina, I think, is, is, a, is a big thing for leads because we've got so many words to sing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, otherwise you're kind of like <laughs> puffing and puffing in between the vocal and the mm -hmm. choreo. <laughs> <laughs> the choreo. <laughs> We're the section that manages to perfect the breathe, the cheat breathing. You know, yeah. so we look all excited and we take a deep breath and then we take yeah. another one. And <laughs> <keep smiling. laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Does what it, I also find challenging is other parts, haven't you? Oh. You've got to be really good listeners because you may have the tune, but there'll be times when when the baritones actually need to be fuller and we need to be baritones and a lot of practice on that to try and so that we we have to back off but keep performing yeah. so you know when when they are above us we have to let them have that moment and mm. and so listening i think is important for every part but i think we could easily become very blasé about it yeah i agree and i think people think you know as lees you know you go yeah i've got the tune i'm just going to sing my part but actually there's so much more to it you know you have to do what the the other sections are doing as well um and like you say you know you've got to when you're below the berries you've got to beef out more and allow them to you know be lighter and vice versa and it's making sure that that water sounds solid rather than doing that all the time isn't it yeah so, um, absolutely yeah there's that odd note that is the tune and you think oh you know, if it's a, a popular song you're singing, you'll find that they, that you get caught out because it doesn't go the way you think it's going to go, and you know, so you can't you can't lose focus. I think just as we're speaking about challenges as well, we're automatically going into one of the other discussion points that I had, which was um, assumptions that perhaps we had about the lead voice part when we first became barber shoppers. Um, I know I had my misconceptions and Kate from Fourth Valley and I, we, we kind of touched on that and Sarah as well, you know, thinking, oh, great, I've got the melody, but there's so much more to it than that. Um, so we can incorporate a little bit of that in as well. Um, I think for me, the, the challenges of singing lead, you know, as well as the assumption was just, you know, initially it was the, okay, great, I've got the melody and this is a song I know. So um, quite often our section leader up in Aberdeen she'll say yes this might be a song you know so it's the same but it's different because there's that odd little little note that's just not quite where you think it's going to go and it's just about having that awareness and not assuming you know something just because it's the melody it's actually still about <clears throat> excuse me like doing you know doing your homework and you know listening to the music listening to the learning tracks looking at the sheet music um and you know making sure that you're not <laughs> singing something um the way you think it's going to sound as opposed to how it's actually been written for the four parts yeah i think this, this was my um my biggest fault as well when i changed from a baritone to a lead that i that i really had like a, a high nose <laughs> from coming from the baritone and i thought well okay like melody is check and it wasn't like that at all 
and, and suddenly it was so difficult to sing the melody and I thought well what's happening there but I mean all those things that that you have to think about like which voice color would you use and at, at what part and which word would you um, like emphasize in what way to express what emotion and all those things and because I mean also as a quartet lead the the quartet lead is kind of um, defining the the quartet sound because mm -hmm. it's what what the audience like like Shawan said what the audience remembers and hears at first so um, yeah you like you are the one in the in the front row if you want and so and and this is so much uh, responsibility that I personally felt suddenly so as a as a baritone, I tended to like hide in the back and like do do my crazy nerd stuff with all the chords and all the things, but I didn't really think about like all those other things. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was a totally new world for me <laughs> that opened up there. And it was really it it still is very challenging. But I mean, this is what I love about it, of course. Yeah, I think you're right about the um, the pressure. I think the pressure is more on the leads because it is the, the, the melody line. And I think, um, you know, when I do sing the Barry in the quartet, like like you've just said, it, it's, you know, you kind of feel, oh, the pressure's slightly off, you know, they're not listening to me. <laughs> they're listening to the lead. Um, so I think as a lead, you have got that added pressure, I think, of uh, knowing people are listening to the melody line and that's your voice. So, Definitely. Um, I think also with um, things like forward motion within a song as well, quite often, um, I know that with songs that I've sung either in, in chorus or in a quartet setting, the lead quite often has pickups. So it's about, you know, making sure you're still driving that forward mm -hmm. motion on so that the song doesn't end up kind of dragging. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I guess it comes from the word lead, you know, it, it's, yeah. you kind of have to keep that. You've got to lead the whole song all the way through. You've yeah. got to have that presence, haven't you? And I think you notice that more with quartets. I'm always mm -hmm. drawn to watching and listening to the lead um, and where the other parts have different flourishes and that I will focus on them. But I always generally come back to the lead and I always have that presence, real presence in the song and presence on the stage as well. But do you think that's because we sing leads? We we tend to, to lean towards the, the, the lead, don't we? Because we can pick them out. You know, from the back That's of a good yeah. point. It would be interesting to hear what the baritones and tenors have said about yeah. about listening I, to quartets. I did that as well as the baritone, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So the other thing which I find challenging as a section leader for my for my lead section is to to assure that we really have a vocal unity, mm. so that not like a single voice uh, or a single voices stick out. In, in tone quality or in uh, in vocal color or whatever and this is this yeah I I didn't see that so much I mean obviously that that has to be the same challenge for the other parts but I think for for the melody it's really obvious because like like again like Siobhan said in the beginning the audience first listens to the melody mm -hmm. and so if if some is if it's only one voice that has a totally different voice color in like in a part of the lead, then she would stick out and that would not be good. So this is, I think this is really a, a, um, a big part of our like section rehearsals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's quite a contrast between singing lead in, well, for me anyway, singing lead in a quartet and singing lead in the chorus because yeah. Um, I can sing the same song, like if we, you know, borrow a repertoire song from the chorus and sing it in quartet, I will sing it completely differently because you can definitely just ham it up more <laughs> if you're the only one. Yes, um, that's right. Which I think is why I expected it to be like for the, the chorus. So if we've got a new, you know, when, we, when I started and we had like a pop song, I'd be, you know, giving it the karaoke shower version. But actually, you know, you have to be quite technical when you're, you're doing the chorus Mm -hmm. section stuff and I think it's a bit more you can have a bit more freedom in, in your kind of quartet sound you can um kind of take everyone along with you but <laughs> in the chorus yeah there's definitely a lot more technically um technical sort of preparation to to kind of get everyone into that 
that one sound. Um, so yeah, and I think Barry's are also our best friends. <laughs> I love singing <laughs> duets with Barry because we oh, cross yeah. so often. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think if you kind of are in their space a lot of the time, it just makes everything like much easier to sing in, in chorus songs as well. Um, although, because I first thought that they were like this alien <laughs> like line that was like, what is that? But then actually when you when you sing it together, it's like, oh, actually, I see where we share the harmony and where you go, you know, above and below. And like, yeah, I love, I love singing because we've got the same sort of range as well. So I think, yeah, like, um, I think that's something that I didn't really think about when I first started was like the relationship between the other parts as much. I was like, this is the lead line. This is what I'm going to sing. And then nowadays it's much more like, okay, so how does that fit in with everything else? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I think that goes back to that skill of knowing what all the other three parts are doing and it's not just about knowing what we're doing as the, as a section definitely precision as well isn't it like you say knowing those parts what fits together what chord it is whether you're dominant and that precision was yeah. a surprise to me out when i started singing barbershop me too mm -hmm. me too and you could definitely spend hours you know geeking out on that kind of stuff and just go through like <laughs> chord by chord on your sheet music couldn't you yeah. I think as a section leader as well, it, it almost feels like um, we need to be as precise as we can in order to help the rest of our lead, but we also need um, musical knowledge and we need to know what the other parts are doing and quite often we try and um, sort of em um, emphasise to our leads, you know, sing, um, sing with your backing track, no lead, you put the lead in. Mm. Sing and do mm. a duet with the bass mm -hmm. when you know bass only or whatever and and try and do that because then you they get to know more about what the other parts are doing but I think we have to be a bit hot on that we have to make sure like Kate said <laughs> that they as leads we've got such a lot of words we need to know all our words we can't get away with not knowing them we have to be yeah. you know 100% yeah. oh, there and as section leaders, we have to keep that in check. So if we as section leaders don't know the words, we are absolutely. <laughs> can I share can I share a funny story with you guys, yes, right? Of course. OK, so I was in a quartet a couple of years ago. Uh, we, we were a non-competing quartet. We were just four friends that loved to sing together. And um, we actually sang for my sister's wedding. It was 2017. And <laughs> Um, we sang Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, but because of the denomination of the church we were singing in, we had to alter some of the lyrics just to make sure it was appropriate for the setting we were in, um, which we hadn't realized until about a week beforehand. <laughs> uh, so, and you can imagine this was more of an a cappella arrangement than a barbershop one. So the other three parts really had sort of complementary ooh and e and ah and joined in maybe, you know, the, the second half of a phrase just to say, you know. Um, so we got to the second verse and my mind went completely blank and I looked at my three friends and I could see it written all over their face. We don't know what you're supposed to be singing. <laughs> I never learned these lyrics. That's on you. You're the lead. <laughs> And um, eventually I got back in. It was actually my director, Sophie Radcliffe, that saved me because she was actually standing in as baritone at the time. Um, and she she kind of saved the day and, you know, kind of mouthed the words to me. And I was like, oh, OK, I've got it. I've got it back. But it was, you know, I mean, for all of like, oh, two, two and a half seconds. But, you know, it felt like two and a half minutes of just, oh, my God, I've forgotten what I'm supposed to be singing. I can't default to the lyrics. I know they're not appropriate for this setting. And oh, my goodness. It was, yeah, it, it's funny to look back on now, but that, that goes back to that point where you really need to know your lyrics if you're going to be a lead, because not everybody can back you up, especially in a quartet scenario. <laughs> yeah. something, um, Sil something Silka said was um, making sure voices don't stand out. They blend, everybody blends. Um, I find it quite useful, well, interesting as a newbie to sometimes sit out, okay, if they're singing a song that I don't know, I haven't got the music with me or whatever. And if you sit and watch them all, sorry, them all, as in the rest of the chorus, it's fascinating to actually pick out voices that do stick out slightly. Mm -hmm. um, really, really, really interesting as in, God, I hope that's not me, you know, sort of feeling. Very interesting, <laughs> Silka, good point. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I have been that voice that's been picked out. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, what I find interesting is then like do the next step as a section leader and to analyze what the reason is why that voice is sticking out because it's not always the 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 loudness it, it yeah. can be a, a different uh, vowel or it can be mm -hmm. the tongue position or whatever and like to to have the knowledge to analyze that and then to give um to give help to change that that um that part or that behavior or whatever this is what I really love about like the job of a section leader, mm -hmm. really to like improve not only the the sound of the chorus or or the like the 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 knowledge of the lead section, but also to help each individual singer of my section. This is really what I love about it. Yeah, I totally agree with that because um, some people just don't well, some people don't understand theory. Some people don't read music. And I think if we understand it in depth and we can communicate it across uh, in a way that they understand, um, it, it means that mm. everybody is feeling inclusive and we're also able to produce a unified sound as a section. Um, so that maybe, you know, the odd voice doesn't pop out, uh, hopefully. Because <laughs> I think also we can be a bit lead diva and we can be a bit like, you know, um, I can sing better than you. And, and obviously we can't do that on stage. I mean, <laughs> you don't know, do you? you? just don't know if your voice is popping out. So we have to, you know, rein it in a bit and make sure that we're all one voice if we can. <laughs> I think it's a fine balance, isn't it? I think I will save the chorus. You know, <laughs> we've all done that. I'll say the chorus and I'll, I'll just make sure the leads are singing. So you just push a little bit, project that little bit stronger so you know they will get it. <laughs> but there you go. I think that's as well, like when you, when you then step onto the competition stage and it's a completely different kind of sound that you mm. are hearing. Um, you quite often sound like different to how you do in the rehearsal room, mm. you know, when you're hearing yourself. And so sometimes, the, you know, I know I've had that paranoia on the contest stage where I thought, am I sticking out right now? I don't know if I'm sticking out. And then you watch the video back. Can I hear myself? I'm, you know, yeah. hoping that you don't. <laughs> yeah, that totally took me back, to be honest. When when I first started singing with Milltown, the first competition that we went to, it was the first time I'd ever sung on stage. And the sound was completely different. I felt like I was singing on my own. Uh -huh. it, it, was, it was a total shock to me. In fact, I don't think I sang much that first time, to be quite honest. I think I reverted to type and just shut up. Um, but since that, because um, we talked about it and we started doing more things, I was trying to sing outside rather than always singing in an enclosed space. So you, you get used to hearing in different ways. And I found that really, really helpful, actually. Because mm -hmm. for me, as a, as a new starter, it really took me back and I thought, oh, I wouldn't want anyone else to, to feel like that the first time on stage so then um, we need to get practice that a little bit more so we can be a bit more used to it this is where when they do a sort of mic test and things like that um Kirsty came back and said look you're not you're going to hear yourself you're not going to hear other people around you it's going to seem really dead and so she said but sing how you sing in, in the dress rehearsals she said don't push it because it'll be fine it's just going to be strange and I think because she warned us that it was going to be quite dead it was it stops us getting worried about it but until you're there and then all you can hear is you it is very disconcerting mm. it's mm -hmm. yeah. it can really throw you off live what hall that you normally sing in and you, yeah, just you need to, to be it, very it? you need to be very confident about yourself and that i mean that you really know your part you know every little whatever movement everything so that you don't change um a bit on stage even if the like your impression is totally different mm -hmm. so like like uh, kathy said you just or sarah uh you really have to do exactly the same what you did in rehearsal and in in the dress rehearsal mm -hmm. and this is this is also a challenge but i mean this is a challenge for every everything in the chorus not only for the leads then Absolutely. And I think that your your spot on the risers where you've been placed also plays a you know plays a factor in just going back to mm -hmm. what we were saying about voices sticking out. Um I know that our director in Aberdeen and she actually got this, I think I believe it was Sandy Marin Kate did it with Fourth Valley, 
um, where they actually got you know everybody lined up and then everybody sang sang a little bit and then you got you got placed with the <laughs> placed yeah. with um you know with certain voice types and then you from there you're placed in a certain place on the risers so that you can sing in your full voice and not stick out like everybody kind of compliments each other and supports mm -hmm. each other so um, yeah, I think this this concept this this concept is like fairly new. Maybe a few years that that they are practicing it, and I think for a lot of people it was such a relief, so that they didn't have to hide or whatever, and they didn't get those comments anymore. Like you're sticking mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. just sing quieter or whatever which really wasn't their fault actually, but they, are, they were just standing not in their optimal um, uh, surroundings, so. Absolutely. It's almost a rite of passage for a lead to be eyeballed by the director or the coach, you know. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, was, um, it was a really interesting process actually to do it with Sandy, but I always think that the coaches that do rise replacements, it's like some sort of weird, I don't know, like voodoo magic, how they can listen, because Sandy would like swap two people. And like, I, so I, I think swapped with, you know, another lead that I used to stand next to, but when I stood on her left-hand side, it would sound completely different to when I stood on her right-hand yeah. side. And it was like, this is really weird. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've definitely um, been a bit of a foghorn. So I'm now right on the back row, which I really like because <laughs> I just feel like I can sing out and that's fine. But yeah, I've, um, it's it's definitely um makes a difference like your riser placement and and having patches of leads together and being able to hear your own part and and things also yeah i think that thing of um the safety in numbers is is key as well to kind of to have that yeah that unity of sound like in bubbles around the the chorus is is good as well to kind of share that share the sound and not just go for it on your own. <laughs> I think in a way that what you've been saying about placement on the risers is a bit of an art in itself, making sure mm -hmm. that you get that right. Because I remember I was on the back row when I first started and I was next next to two leads when I was in the middle and they really supported me at the beginning. And then, you know, every time we mixed it up, we used to have a thing where we used to completely mix up the risers and you wouldn't know who you were standing next to. And quite often, if I was standing next to a tenor, I would have to really concentrate on what I was singing. But um, I was told, just stick to your guns, stick to what you've learned. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't try and correct anybody else, if they're a lead or whoever, just stick to your part. And the only way you can do that is know it inside out. Yeah. And you, yeah. Should be, you should be able to stand anywhere and still be able to not over sing, still be able to sing your part and not worry about anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, when the leads are together, it's it's great because we can support one another. Mm -hmm. and, and I suppose in a way we're not singing too loud. But when you're mixed up, you've really got to stick to what you've been told to do and not oversing because I think that's where the problems can, can arise, especially on, on a competition. You've also got to appreciate it. It's going to sound different when you're on the front row and you've got all the people behind you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A bit. Um, you know, and you've just got to concentrate and you not be put off. But on the back row, you've got no support. So there are advantages and disadvantages to being in both areas. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's yeah. I definitely like to hear some, I like to ha have a harmony part that, like, I, I like being able to hear a lead, but I like being able to sing against the other parts as well. I think yeah. it's ideal to kind of mm -hmm. have a mixture because otherwise you're not really, you're not singing the style if you're kind of just stuck you know with yeah. with hearing your own part or hearing yourself <laughs> yeah it's definitely better to i well i feel better when i can sing against a bass or a barrier or a tenor yeah. or whatever yeah. and just have that Same. that surround sound would be ideal actually i think i really like where i stand just now but i mean everyone has like their perfect position where they'd be happy i think in the middle surrounded by like all the sound would just yes. be amazing mm. so yeah <laughs> there is that like one optimum exactly. part isn't there <laughs> i also find that for different songs i like to hear the different harmony parts like for this song i really like singing against a tenor and this song i really like singing against a baritone and it kind of it kind of chops and changes so yeah. i think in a way techniques like that as well build confidence yes they build yeah. great confidence um 
you know, whatever, however long you've been doing this, I think that there's always something new to learn. And I yeah. think um, there's lots of things that you can try to, to swap it around a little bit. And, you know, I, but I think that builds a lot of confidence, especially if you're next to somebody, or not somebody, but next to a part that you're not used to, particularly tenor for me, used to put me off because um, they were singing so high. And I was thinking, I've no idea what I'm singing here. <laughs> <laughs> you know sometimes you you can clash a bit with somebody's voice or sometimes it can um, actually be a good pairing up but when when particularly when I was new to it um I, I needed to hear a lead and I used to say I can't hear any lead and they say just sing what you normally need to sing Vicky don't worry about everybody else but when you first start you almost kind of need a lead in your ear mm. <laughs> until you find your feet a little bit and build your confidence yeah. in it. Are there any personal achievements that anybody would really like to to discuss, you know, from their time in barbershop or their time as a lead or a section leader? Just go right ahead. Um, only really just becoming, being asked to be an assistant section leader. I've, I'm like, I was buzzing. I'm buzzing. I just love it. Doing PVIs. I've just done two PVIs with um, two members of Lay City. And, and I loved helping. I just love helping people. And also, I've just started the ACP program. I've just started the arranging certification program. Uh, wow. That's the first little module. I've got a long way to go. That's the, <laughs> that's the first module and really getting into that. And it's, it's brought me back into the theory, which I think can only help when we actually get back in person um, and, and I can stand with, with, with our lead section leader and really help out with the music if, if, if needed. Um, what I'm most looking forward to as a challenge is writing something one day um, and I think knowing the parts inside out, knowing how a song is put together is also quite useful as a lead, um, not that we all need to do that but in a way you kind of need to know why did you put that there, why is that note there, why is that chord there and, and I, I'm just curious to know, you know, how do you write something <laughs> and how do you make sure the leads shine as well as the other parts. <laughs> That's amazing, Vicky. I can't wait to hear what you come up with. Right you... at the beginning there, right at the beginning of this. So um, it does it, but you know that does it. That, I mean, that's I a that's a huge that's a huge achievement just to even you know start something like that. You know, because it, I mean, it must be quite daunting because, like you're saying, it's quite a long pro process. You're right at the beginning, but it's that yeah. perseverance with the that ultimate end goal at the end that you want to arrange something. And yeah. I think that I think that's amazing. This came about really because I've done theory like well 30 years ago when, when I when I started to get into piano and I haven't touched the piano for 30, oh. probably more than 30 years and um I suddenly decided I'm going to get the piano get a piano um and start li listening and looking at the theory side nobody asked me to do it I decided to do it and and it was for you I saw the ACP program and I think that's it's just it was just really interesting to understand mm -hmm. Because nobody really told me when I first started what how barbershop music is all put together. I just learned my part and, and got on with it. And I think really I just want to know now because I want to write something eventually. <laughs> I've no idea. I don't know how to do it, but one day I'm going to write something. <laughs> we'll be singing it on the convention stage. Oh, yeah. I don't yes. know. That. <laughs> And that's it, written by Vicky. Oh, it'd be lovely. It'd be lovely. You've got to go through the, the beginners program first, and then you can go to the intermediate um, section or the intermediate side, and then you go into actually writing. So it's a long way off yet. It's probably two or three years before I can do it. But you can do it at your own pace. You don't need to rush it. Once mm -hmm. you've started, you know, you can have up to two years to just do your first few modules. We're giving you five years and we want a song on stage. <laughs> right, okay, five years. No pressure. Five years from today. 13th then. of February 2026. We'll be coming for you, Vicky, and saying, <laughs> Where's that chart? I actually think it's going to be before then. <laughs> I'm, I'm due to start my, I'm due to do my next, um, next exam probably in the next couple of months. Um, and then I think there's another two exams and then so I'm, I'm hoping to get the, the, the beginners bit done by I don't know maybe early summer Ooh. and then you, you you have to start thinking about what to do next um, and, and get on the next stage so I am going to take it all the way through 
Um, so you can see your passion. You, you'll do mm -hmm. it. I love it. Yeah, well it's, done. It's hard. It's, it's hard to get your head around, but I love it. And um, just one of the things to before you before you wrap up is um, I found that when this first started in March, you know, the lockdown, that Jean uh, Joan Boutelier's um, videos really helped me um and inspired me to keep going with singing and i've i've used this time really as personal development because i can't do anything else because we can't sing with anybody so no. i just thought this is a good time to do it i've actually emailed joan to thank her for um inspiring me to keep going through this you know this uncertain time last march and she emailed me back and we invited her to lay city one night <laughs> Um, and she actually came to one of our um, rehearsals, which was lovely because we got to ask her loads of questions as, as president. And I put something in the newsletter the week before to say we're going to be meeting the president. <laughs> it was so that um, Lay City ladies could think of a question and, and it was it's brilliant. Is there anybody, um, anybody else that wants to share a, a personal achievement or anything, anything else, anything else that they want to add? Absolutely anything else. Well, I, joined, I joined the chorus as I said only two and a bit years ago so it's amazing that I joined in December or November and then in May we were at Cardiff and we were second as in what an achievement as in just amazing and um, somebody was mentioning about when you're singing on stage somebody had said to me um it's the sage is really bad you all you can hear is yourself but it's okay at Cardiff no it <laughs> not from my point of view so the first probably four five six bars maybe I was sort of go oh my god they can hear me but I settled down it must be okay <laughs> so personal achievement to do that so quickly and I'm just so disappointed that we didn't go to where we're gonna go to <laughs> Kentucky <laughs> yeah yeah because in in nobody's shock chorus we rehearse only once a month and um so we don't have uh, weekly zoom meetings but only once a month and um, so I, I try to um, set up section rehearsals, but not with the whole section, but with little groups so that we could really work on, on special um, special things. Like I, I did a little um, uh, thing about straw technique and um, this semi uh, occluded vocal technique and all that. And so, uh, yeah, I think they, they appreciate appreciated that a lot so that they they got the chance to do something out of the like um out of the normal chorus rehearsal and so and of course we had a chat and so everyone could um talk about how the situation was and and all that and this is so important mm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's been massive for Milltown Sound. I know like, there's not been a week when we've not had a, a Zoom meeting, whether it's been a rehearsal, whether it's just been a game or a chat, um, you know, little acts of kindness, you know, people dropping things off at other people's house. It's been absolutely lovely to, yeah. to see everybody and stay in touch and just feel that love and that care. That um, sense of connection. Sense of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's connection amazing. with everybody. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely about fun. the community. Yeah, it's mm. just a bit hard to somebody make such a difference, isn't it? Yeah, it's so much more than just a group of singers, or a group of friends, <laughs> yes. you know. Uh -huh. All like-minded and going the same way and wanting to do the same thing. It's yeah. brilliant, just fabulous. <laughs> this has been good as well because you've seen different faces and it's a, it's refreshing again not, you know, to have another different group that you're actually chatting to and you all feel like-minded, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. still enthusiastic because you do mm -hmm. have. To I have had bits. My rehearsal was on Thursday, and I felt like I wanted to be there, and I haven't for a while because I work in the NHS and it's quite stressful at times. Yeah. But you know, I really enjoyed it, and um, I just sang away, did the exercises, and, and you know, it was, it was, absolutely. Yeah, I think the more the more you the more you put in, the more you give to the Zoom stuff, the more you get out of it. So. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, I'm a bit spoiled as a member of the music team and as a section leader because if I have to demonstrate anything or if I have to, you know, if I'm actually part of the rehearsal, I feel much more energized and kind of excited about it. Um, but yeah, I would I would encourage everybody to to get a, basically all the yeah, just get involved as much as yeah. as possible because the more you kind of try and put in, I mean, it can be a nightmare if you've been on 
a screen the whole day and at work and you just think oh I can't face just sitting in front of another screen but if you actually I mean I've driven my neighbors absolutely bonkers because <laughs> I'll be in my spare room and I just I just think no I've just got to sing because I you know I've, I've done no other you know creative stuff all week and I just need to give this hour and a half you know just got to just got to do it and you feel mm -hmm. so much well, I feel so much better if you just kind of give it a go yeah. <laughs> so yeah I mean just yeah I'm trying to encourage as many people as possible to just just go for it give it give it as much as you can and we'll be back together soonish I think we're giving ourselves different goals aren't we where you know it's it's not the not the old normal it's a new the new normal isn't it so we have to make different goals for ourselves and for our own mm. sections otherwise you know you get a little bit apath apathy within the section mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, try and make it fun try and make them laugh isn't it yeah those, and those organizing it are actually putting a lot of work into getting it Oh, yeah. keeping it as fresh as they can as well. Do we want to wrap up just going around and saying what you've enjoyed about this session, what you're maybe going to, you know, anything you want to, you're going to take away from this session or um, anything that you want anyone who's watching this to take away from this session. So just, just free flow, whoever wants to go first. Um, oh, well, I think for me, it's been lovely to see other leads from other um, choruses, you know, you, you, especially now that, you know, we haven't had a convention for a few years. It's, you know, you don't get to see anyone, do you, in the, in the flesh? So it's really lovely to see you all and, and to talk and know that actually we all think the same things. And we're all, you know, we're all quite like minded. So it's been lovely to chat to you all. Nice to see you, Sarah Dobson from Sarah Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we the, only face I know is Siobhan. Sorry? the only face I know is Siobhan. Yeah, I know you're Sarah. Well, I've, I've recognised a few of the other girls. But, um, it's nice that we're all feeling similar emotions, to be honest, isn't it? Because sometimes you think oh, I'm just knocking my head against a brick wall, but actually we're all, we're all going through the same emotions and the same trials. And so that's good, you know, we'll all come out the other end, hopefully unscathed and singing bass. <laughs> <laughs> because our voices are <laughs> drop. <laughs> no, no, well, sure. this, just, this just renewed my enthusiasm again after a bit. Well, I think we know it's great. Yeah. For me, um, it's it's been great to connect with other, you know, just with other barber shoppers. But you know, it's great that you know those other barber shoppers happen to be leads. Um, you know, meeting new people and just having a, a discussion that's you know, just like. Um, Sarah New said that it's kind of reignited that enthusiasm that we've all got for our particular part. Um, you know, the things that I would take away from this discussion, I think that, you know, the general themes coming through is that, you know, the lead part is such an amazing and wonderful part to sing, um, but it definitely comes with its own unique set of challenges and its own unique set of opportunities as well. So, um, you know, it's not always as easy as it might look. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. For me, it was really lovely to like really connect for me for the first time in that way with other Region 31 uh, singers, because yeah. we as um, as No Border Shore Chorus are really like a bit off shore, <laughs> if you want, because I mean, we're on the we're on the continent and we only get to see people for a convention. And the last time was was in 2019. So, and yeah, it will not be this year. So this, this is really a long time. And um, uh, uh, during convention, I mean, there is not much time to really get connected because um, yeah, you have so many time to spend with your chorus or I mean, you want to spend time with your chorus as well, right? So yeah, that was really lovely to, to get to know um, people from and especially leads from from so many other choruses so thank you for that. that that was like for me personally wonderful me too it's really nice to see um other people from other choruses because i don't know many people really in the barbershop world apart from lake city most of the time um and what's nice is now that i know all your faces when we do get together we can, we can tap each other on the shoulder and go do you remember that round table thing that we did? <laughs> you know, and, and actually we we can just 
say hello to one another and you know actually spot one another on the stage <laughs> now as well. Oh, no, it's a few more, fa few more faces. We can yeah. You might not recognise us though under all the lashes and like thirty wow. layers of foundation. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which so actually, funnily enough, I'm looking forward to putting on again. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. Bye. It's team lead around the table. Bye, Bye. Stacey. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.